as soon as you said that, first thought comes to mind is this guy Richard Branson. And somebody asked him, what, 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 what's a thing that really annoys you with people? And, and he just said, when people are discourteous. You know, it's, that's just so real. Look, it's, it, it doesn't matter how annoyed you are. Just be polite, be warm, be friendly. You know, it's so annoying when people are being brutal to the dealers. And you know, a lot of the guys I run with, these guys are, are spoiled, rich people. And it's like, you know, just don't be discourteous to the staff, to the dealers. They're doing their job. And by the way, today they're doing their job even less affecting the game than ever because of these, these machines. How can you be annoyed with the dealer or throw cards at the dealer when it's the machine that spit it out? <laughs> yeah. You know, in Las Vegas, when the, the cards come out of the machine, we still cut it one time. In uh, San Jose, they actually don't even cut the deck. And, and I, I don't know if I'm a fan of cutting it or not, but it really, cutting the deck, honestly, I guess it's just wasting time. Because uh, maybe you get in one uh, more deal every hour if, uh, if you don't cut the deck. I, you know, really, wh why do we cut the, cut the deck after it comes out of the machine? Those deck mates, too. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's just a habit, I think, half the time. Isn't habit, it? and maybe people like to see it. But it is, uh, but it is it's, a, it's an unnecessary thing. But uh, So you, don't, you like your politeness is important to you. What else is important to you? Um, I mean... What's what's important to me? I, uh, yeah, just uh, cherishing the people that are dear to you. The, you know, family. You know, when you when you were talking about uh, like who are the people? You know, for me, like my idols in life are, were my mom, who's gone now, my little brother, just a good guy. He goes out and uh, works in New York, and and by the way, he makes pretty decent money. But with the wife and uh, three kids in New York, you know, it's still like a, a little bit of a struggle. Yeah. You know, uh, more than it's a little bit of a struggle. I mean, I see, and he's very, very good with finances and, and works his butt off. And uh, yeah, and it's it's interesting for me because I see him, he went the nine to five route and I went the poker route. And, uh, you know, sure, I have my struggles. He has his struggles, whatever. And, but it's just, this is part of everyday life. I got a best friend who uh, went to Harvard Law School lives in Houston, raising a couple of kids there and uh, doing well. But again, it's like uh, everybody's got their family and their struggles and, you know, finances and all that. And, uh, you know, recognizing where you're at and being grateful for the things that you have going for you and for the opportunity. And that's one thing for me is I've been really fortunate and I haven't capitalized on it. And perhaps that's why my relationships are as strong as they are is because I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to infringe on this relationship. This person's got access to this, so let me, uh, you know, and I, I've never exploited that. Um, and perhaps I've squandered opportunities too, you know, but uh, for sure, like if I decided to go and do a project or whatever, I do have like a support group that uh, might be around there. Or they might say, oh, this guy's a poker DJ and I want nothing to do with investing in that. I was, was going to ask you that because, <laughs> like you say, your, your acquaintances, we'll call them, mm -hmm. is probably vast. And then you have a, an inner circle of people who you love that you call family, whether they're blood related or not. Um, but who are the people who are surrounding you on the more frequent basis? Who Who's in your ear the most? Right, right, right. Well, for me, I'm very, very fortunate to be super tight with uh, Andrew Robel. It's interesting because right now he actually, he's building a home, but we live in the, we both live on the same floor in the Mandarin. And, uh, um, you know, uh, he and I were constantly uh, talking and, uh, you know, I, I, I've learned a lot about poker from him, even though he's like, much younger than I am, I, I, I've learned a lot from him. And he's just a really, really good guy, you know, and uh, watching him grow. Um, back in the day, I thought he was like a little bit socially awkward, but it's like really endearing, <laughs> it, but a really, really good, good human being yeah. and uh, very fair business guy and, uh, you know, rooting for him. And then there's Bobby Baldwin, who, uh, who you know, he's, my boss, but he's not really my boss. He's like, my boss is boss is boss, but he's like a personal mentor. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I call him my friend as well. Uh, even though I work for the guy, you know, it's, it's, 
it's interesting because, I mean, when I first started hanging out with Bobby Bolden, he would say something, and I would go home and write, take notes on some of the things I would learn from him. And uh, now, you know, just to have this person in my life and to learn so much from him, uh, it's, uh, uh, and I don't want to, you know, hurt his image by saying that I've learned a lot. No, 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 no. But, uh, uh, but uh, no, but uh, here I am. I mean, I, I'm, I'm running around on almost a daily basis with a living legend. Mm. I mean, this guy, he's going to go down as one of the, you know, greatest, uh, most memorable uh, members of the gambling community ever.